If any of you know me, if you've seen me at locals, you've seen me at regionals, you've seen anything I've ever played, you know I play some weird shit. I don't really play meta, and when I do, it's not meta meta. It's always something spicy. I like spice. If it comes down to a deck choice, a tech card, whatever the case may be, it's got my name written all over it. And that's what I'm coming at you guys with today. Got a few cards that I've used over the years that nobody's ever, I'm gonna say nobody's ever thought about using, but that you don't typically see in standard Yu-Gi-Oh play, whether it be meta or otherwise. You got Rank Up Magic the Seven One. This card I used around the time, right before Pendulum was really a big thing. I think we only had Cleaves at that time, but I used it with Shadows. I used it in just about any deck that I had, especially if it was like a low tier deck, this card went in there. You have to draw during your normal draw phase and reveal it. And then at the beginning of your main phase one, you're gonna special summon a number Xyz monster between the numbers of 101 and 107. My number monster of choice was number 107 Galaxy Eyes Tachyon Dragon. So he goes from a 3000 attack to a 4500 attack beat stick that stuns the field. Back then, I mean, that was devastating because a lot of people, they committed to the field, hand traps weren't really prevalent. We also didn't have Kaijus then either. So if a little more than one turn, you definitely had the game in your hand. And I just want you guys to know that every time I drew this card, I won. I'd be losing the game. Top deck, rank up matches the seventh one. Windmill slam. You gotta come all, I mean, you gotta come from the back of the body with it. All the way to the floor, pow. Let your opponent know, no matter what you about to do from here on out, it means nothing. And I'm not sure it'll be that good now, because of the fact that we have Master Rule 4 and you kind of don't want to like waste your extra monsters on, on, a, on a monster when you, the links are so prevalent. But let's be honest, even in this day and age, you're bringing out a 4500 beat stick that can stun the field, you're doing some damage. We got your boy number 59, Cricket Cook here. Aziz monster, nobody ever played this card ever, but I did. You get to on either player's turn, blow up your entire field. Only yours, not your opponent, but just yours. That wasn't very big, wasn't very important, and nobody wants to just nuke their own field. I mean, come on, only bad players do that, right? But he came out right after time when we had artifacts. And two problems that you had with artifacts was, one, if you never saw them, or two, you were gonna draw them. Never seen them wasn't a big deal, but if you drew them, what were you gonna do with them? And that's where number 59 Cookie Cook came in. I would draw into an artifact, especially a Scythe, because at that time, Scythe was so devastating because Scythe literally told you your opponent they could not play. I draw Scythe, oh man, Artifact Saint was dead, but I'm gonna set this Scythe, I'm gonna make Cricket Cook in my turn. Your opponent's automatically gonna think you're a bad player for it. Oh man, he's playing Cricket Cook, doesn't mean much. So then on their turn, you're gonna blow up your side of the field, Scythe's gonna hit the field, activate effect, stun your opponent for the turn, and now you got two 2,000 plus months on your side of the field that they can't out. Really, really good, really devastating. I actually played this in a uh, regional. Um, I was playing a 50 card Shuri Nuri build, and I was just trying things out. You know, we already had the Omega loot because Omega was amazing, Omega is amazing. That's why they put it to one. I wanted to play artifacts in it, so if I ever got to go first and I want to do more than just hand loot with the Omegas, I could also stun my opponent until I was ready to make a big push. That's where Cricket came in play, and it always worked. It was amazing. Another one of my big bad boys, Sandion the Time Lord. Sandion, Sandion, whatever you want to call it. Now he's a special one because most of the Time Lords have zero attack and zero defense. He's got 4,000 attack and a big old booty of 4,000 defense. Not much is getting over there in any day and age. This was my out to a lot of things that stopped you from special summoning or stopped you from using effects because he was just a normal summon. So especially around the time when World Challenge was really, really huge, they made that field where they had Christy on the field or they had Gamma Seal on the field. That's fine. I can just normal summon Sandy Young with his 4,000 attack, beat over whatever's in my way, and then continue on with my plays. The only extra bonus is the fact that after he battles, he burns your opponent for 2,000 damage. Like I said, and that's just the bonus. The main reason why we use him is because we want to get around stuff that becomes annoying. Last but not least, y'all, probably my favorite tech card ever created in Yu-Gi-Oh! And I say that because y'all know I, I play many techs. I play many janky cards. This card is probably the jankies that Konami has ever created, but I love it so much because only I can make it work the way that it works. Slash Draw. If you know what Slash Draw does, you discard a card, and then you send from the top of your deck to the graveyard, cards equal to the number of cards your opponent controls on their side of the field. And then you draw a card. You reveal that card. If it's a Slash Draw, you nuke the entire field, and your opponent takes 2,000 damage for each card on the field, including yours. Other cool part, let's say the card you draw is not a Slash Draw. You still get a free card, it's a draw. You get to go into your graveyard and take cards equal to the number of cards that you sent to the graveyard, shovel those back into your deck. This card lets you choose what's left in your graveyard. It lets you choose what you want to reuse. More recently, this is probably the most recent tech that I've used. Now, if you've seen me play anything lately, it's been in every deck that I've played. Every deck that I've played. I used that at the YCS 200. I played against a Dino player. I actually got game with, <laughs> I actually got game three with this card. Um, he had a Doka, an open uh, Conductor Tyranno, Lost World, and something else on the field. 8,000 exactly. Um, I actually played in an online tournament where I got to the finals against Glad Beast. 
and I was at 200 life points. I was playing Cubics at the time. I doubt I could have won. This, I literally had two cards in hand, this and another. I said, you know what? I'm just going to mill cards off and give them game. I play this card, this card, another card, juice last draw. He burned for 10,000. I won the tournament. Luck sack like a mug. But mathematically, I should not be hitting this effect as much as I do. But anybody in my locals can tell you they have played victim to this card. In my locals, I'm known as a tech guy. I'm known as a jack player. What are you known for? What are some cards or some decks that you guys have tried out that have actually given you guys a lot of success? It's your boy Trev from Team APS, and with that, I end my turn.